And I'm Melanie. The new trials of card capture Sakura, Sharon, and Friends is a popular ongoing fanfic by Wishlove, and it's based off of Clamp's Card Capture Sakura. And each episode will do a deep dive of a chapter. Let's get into it. Hmm. So usually I have a question prepared, but uh, at this time I didn't write anything down. So I guess my oh. question to you would be: um, Have you ever been in a talent show? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I've been in a few. You'll appreciate this. Back in, um, gosh, what was it, fourth grade, my friends and I performed, Stop right now, thank you very much. I need somebody with the human touch. For all you Gen Zs, that is Spice Girl. <laughs> we did not win, sadly. It was quite the atrocity because we should have won. But that's the one that really kind of sticks out in my head. How about you? So I've never been a uh, part of a talent show. I'm very introverted. I hate public speaking. It's really funny because last time Melanie and I got, well, the first time I went to visit Melanie in Kansas, and when we met, I had her read my palm again, and she was looking at it, and she laughed, and it's like, oh, you hate public speaking. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, yes. But funny enough, when I was in third grade, um, we had to write oral presentations and I decided to do mine on St. Valentine's Day because my birthday is pretty close to Valentine's Day. And uh, my teacher liked it so much that she kept bumping me to like, like the, the at first, like your whole class had to give a presentation and the, the teacher would select, um, you would go against your grade and then it's down to three. And, and for some reason I made the top three. Wow. I know. It's like, I, I just couldn't believe I just kept getting that far. It's so strange. I must have really known my presentation well. But um, yeah, so I went <laughs> and I got third place. But like, I beat out everybody else in my grade except for the two guys who, who got first and second. So so that was that was like, not a talent show, but it was an oral presentation. And I still had to perform in front of the parents so so yeah it was pretty impressive <laughs> yeah I mean it's still public speaking yes you know so that's that's awesome though I'm sure your mom and dad were so proud of you yeah it's like none of us saw it coming <laughs> so for a palm reading lesson for all of you uh what I looked at for that is when you look at the thumb you look for these two lines that are kind of like in the center of your palm or, and it's also kind of the one that's like right below, basically. And the bigger the gap, the more you're okay with public speaking. The smaller the gap is those that are not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and Priya has like, the time. <laughs> And then for Alliance of the Stars, um, the only one we have is we got a comment on our Instagram, NT the Pod. Feel free to give us a follow. But it was from Shell Ferret. And basically, it was a comment on our chapter 33, Finding You. And it was our picture that we shared of it is Selena D. Shiroi's picture with Sakura and Wolfie Chan. And Shell the Ferret commented, I miss this sweet boy. And all I could do was respond with crying emojis. <laughs> Seriously, it's like if Wolfie Chan was, was like all our pets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're going to get I'm into so it. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Not until the end of arc three. We got, we got lots of time with, with that cute pup. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, today we'll be discussing Chapter 35, It Must Rain. The release date was August 31st, 2001, which is one month after Wish Chan released Chapter 33, 34, and the TNT special. Uh, the word count is 17,169 words, which is why the audiobook clocked in at two hours. We're, <laughs> we're in August, and it's during the ninth grade summertime. So we're going to be splitting chapter 35 in half. So this episode is going to cover day one of the competition. And then the next episode is going to cover day two of the competition. So I'll just read the summary for day one. The first challenge for the best couple contest was to build a sandcastle. 
Sakura and Sharon were given one point out of five because Erika and Aki stole their castle by switching numbers while they were inside because Sakura of Sakura's sunburn. The three-legged race obstacle course was the second challenge. Erika and Aki tampered with the course, but Sharon and S Sakura still received four points out of five thanks to their teamwork. Sakura sends a dark force, but it escaped after she attacked it with the sword. Sakura and Sharon performed Ryuren's and Nadeshiko's violin piece for their third challenge, a talent show, after Erika and Aki's star cross song and Takashi and Chiharu's skit. Sakura's opening dance left Sharon spellbound before he began the heartbreaking introduction. Sakura joined him and the piece became beautiful. Alone, the two melodies were sad, but when played together, there was a sense of completeness and belonging. They earned first place, which they needed to stay in the competition. That night, Aaron asked Sakura what she liked about Sharon, and she didn't know. Sharon called Erika out on all her tricks, such as stealing the sandcastle and replacing the sunlock with uh, sun lotion. Sakura found a cut in Wolfie Chen, which she patched up. Sharon tried to secretly give Sakura aloe vera, but she knew it was him. <laughs> so, before I get into the discussion, I want to make a note of the title, which is the first half of the quote that I love so much, and that's the tagline of all of our podcast episodes for over a year. Mm -hmm. But because I always take my name titles from Wish Chan's homepage, I had no idea that the title read, It Must Rain First. I <laughs> always thought, It Must Rain, It Must Rain. And even when I did my summary, I called it It Must Rain. But then going to this, uh, this thing and it's like, It Must Rain First, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I had it, I have it pulled up on my side and I was like, well, but okay. <laughs> and like for two seconds, I was wondering, have I been saying it wrong the whole time? And it, and it doesn't make sense anymore, but it makes sense either way. It must rain for there to be a rainbow. It must rain first for it to be a rainbow. So we're good. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> and my comment before we dive in is, you know, I've, I've said before how, you know, I really felt like this fan fiction really spoke to me. It was, you know, there was New York was involved. There was modeling. There was Romeo and Juliet. I will say like all of that I really loved, but it wasn't until I reached this chapter specifically that I knew this fan fiction was my fan fiction soulmate. Like it really solidified my fangirl. Like I am Wish Chan's ride or die for life now. I will do anything for that girl. Like I'll do anything for this fan fiction. Obviously, like I will record until my voice goes hoarse. <laughs> but I don't like this. I this chapter is always gonna hold such a special place in my heart because I remember when I finished it the first time. I literally kind of had tears in my eyes. Not because like the chapter's sad. It's actually like a a super fun chapter but it was just because I was like this is the best thing I've ever read and I wasn't even finished yet and so yeah I love this chapter you're gonna hear me fangirl constantly for probably the next 20-25 minutes <laughs> but yeah this is out of all the chapters this one is near the tip tip top of my favorites but nostalgia wise, this is my number one favorite. <laughs> That's so sweet. Because I read up to chapter 44 when I joined the rest of the fans and waited for, for the next update. But um, I definitely remember being so fond of this chapter. And uh, no, it's a good one. It's a good one. <laughs> so. I am Sakura in this opening scene, feeling mortified that she has to participate in such a spectacle. It's as <laughs> if it's only hitting her now. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think because since, um, I don't know if I, have I talked about this on the pa uh, podcast, but I was almost on a TV show at one point, America's Next Top Model. So I feel like, I don't, I don't think I've mentioned that, but anyways, there, there you go. A little morsel about me. I was, um, on the pilot, but I, I, unfortunately or maybe saving grace <laughs> didn't get to be on the actual season but anyway i feel like i just had to go in it with being like they're gonna edit me however they're gonna edit me and i just i just have to like 
go into a persona and just leave my personal like real Melanie behind. So I feel like I would I would do fine in this type of thing, like maybe not the athletic stuff that they're <laughs> going to do later, but the whole mindset of just like being on camera and having to perform like that, I think I would be fine. But the athletic stuff, no. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm really glad that you told me your inspiration for the MC's voice, because listening to this chapter, I can appreciate it on a whole new level. <laughs> He's so fun. <laughs> so the first challenge was sandcastle building. Have you ever built a sandcastle? Oh, for sure. Like, even though I'm not a water person, I'm actually terrified of water. But so while everyone's in the ocean, like having fun, I'm usually on the beach, like building and being creative. Like, I mean, I wouldn't make all like the fancy stuff that soccer is shout on do. But yeah, have have you built a scene castle? Well, the thing is, though, maybe we weren't like a beach family. Mm. Like, I talked about going to Lake George. And that was like one of the few times that I remember going to an actual beach. So I think I think we had something called Cap Saint Jacques where it was like a lake, but like there was no nothing like beachy. It was just grass and then water and and we like did the cookouts. But I, I I can't really recall making sandcastles, so I'm probably with Sharon on this one. <laughs> so Aki and Erica were not in the mood to build a sandcastle. Which I thought was poor sportsmanship, considering how much they both want to be in this contest. And I mean, honestly, building a sand castle isn't hard. Like, it's really not. You just put the sand in your buckets, you solidify it with water. So, I mean, even if they would have done, like, a volcano, like a big triangle, or even just simple, like the buckets stacked around each other, like, that would be doing minimal effort, but with some reward. You know, the fact of not even doing it and just having it be a pile of sand. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> it's like, what's the point? So <laughs> after a rocky start, SNS did have a good time building the sandcastle together. Now, I remembered that there was sabotage, but I couldn't remember how until the whole Sakura being burned by using fake sunscreen and they had to leave their spot. And then that, that jogged my memory. So... Um, <laughs> so how in the world did Arika switch them? Like, I know magic, obviously, but like there's cameras everywhere. Like, Aki's there, like, would he not notice? Like, I don't, what well, do you think? I can't explain the camera thing, but in the text, she does tell Aki to go work on his tan. Oh, good pickup. Very good pickup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can't explain the uh, the whole, like, um, what do you call it, the, the, the cameras of it all, like, I can't explain that, but mm -hmm. uh, I know that she did tell Aki, oh yeah, just go work on your tan. Now, I don't usually go to my New Trials Rizid blog, because, like, I want to have these fresh, but uh, Diana, she recently commented on my on my chapter 35, so I had to go check it out. And then I was reading my uh, comments. So this is from my reread in 2018. And I wrote, Erica and Aki stole SNS Sandcastle by switching the numbers. And 2003 me was absolutely furious, as I saw in an email I sent to Wish Chen. And I quote, Grr, stupid Erica and Aki, and in caps, they should be punished! Exclamation mark, <laughs> exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> it just it really is like stupid unfair like do, or do you think instead of using like magic she just switched their numbers well Could it just be as easy as that? i think i think what happened too it's like maybe she just switched numbers because i thought everything or maybe you probably thought too that everything is a chronological order so like one is next to two is next to three is next to four but if everybody is going to have their own lots then she mm. can just as easily switch the numbers secretly and, and mm -hmm, that's that. Mm -hmm. And like even Diana, she she had um she commented on the same sandcastle thing. Like you, the first time I read this chapter, I was frustrated by Aki's and Erica's schemes. It still bothers me, but not as much because A, I know the outcome, and B I love these sweeter, fluffier, and sh sh shujo moments in the earlier arcs. <laughs> 
Very true. Very true. It's like we're reading this now and it's like, ah, little pranks, ah, little hijinks. But that's okay. They still come out great at the end. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Now, the second event was the obstacle course. And I did some of these in elementary school. And that's actually when I learned that words of affirmation was my love language, even before (laughs) I knew what love languages were. Because I have a distinct memory of when I was little and my team captain was cheering me on and calling my name and then I was feeling inspired to do better. Like, I literally remember that moment. (laughs) And it's like, wow, (laughs) words are great. (laughs) It's the cutest thing I've ever heard. (laughs) So I really love the three-legged race because it's the testament of their years of working together. Because Sharon and Sakura, they do really well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, just their athletic ability in this is insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially when they cross the log. Um, I wish I could have seen that am- animated. Now, when you did your uh, reread for, for the audiobook, did you remember the obstacle course? Yes. Okay, I did not. I just flushed that out of my memory because it was just such a mess. (laughs) Ironically, the and you know this will surprise you because what we're going to talk about in a minute, I'm sure. But ironically, the thing that I forget about this chapter is the talent show. Like I remember everything else. I I I don't know why, but like when I read the talent show part, like for the audiobook, it was like I was reading it again for the first time just because I don't know why I remember every other little detail about this chapter except for that for some reason and for me it's the opposite so as I probably mentioned before if there's a fan art of it it's burned in my memory if there's no fan art of our fan art of it then it's like oh my gosh I'm discovering it for the first time (laughs) (laughs) so there's a note that there were hidden cameras everywhere, and that definitely gave me Hunger Game vibes. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the same thing, especially because it's making a resurgence right now because of the Ballad of the Songbirds and Snakes. But yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> uh, so it made me really mad when Aki took a page out of Erica's book and sabotaged the bowler traps for Sakura. It's like, what do you have to gain by cheating? It's It's like... Okay, so you win, but is it an earned victory? Like, not that they care, but geez. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I don't know. I just love their teamwork. And I think one of the things that solidified this chapter to me was just the fact of, you know, she keeps it canon, you know, to where they're like so good as a team together that it's just like second nature. And I just love seeing them be as a team like they were like, like original card captors. But yet she kind of gets into their heart and sort of romance, you know, in here too a little bit. And ah, so good. And I just love too that she just has Sakura just start to like punch the concrete, like taking one out of Shadon's book. So I love that she kind of develops Sakura's character a little bit too, where Sakura just doesn't care. And she just wants to get get the work done, you know? And I, I, that's one of my favorite scenes is when they're both just like punching the concrete. And then the MC is, they, they, they broke it with their bare fist. <laughs> oh my gosh! And I thought it was gonna be the opposite of you. I for that for you because I thought that was gonna give you like the heebie-jeebies since the whole thing takes place underwater. That's true. It probably should, but for some reason, if it's them, I just concentrate on them. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a note. I wonder why the cameras didn't pick up on Aki and Erica's cheating, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll let that one slide. <laughs> Maybe maybe we could chalk it up to Erika's is, like, maybe they're both, like, bribing the camera people, yeah. so then the camera people doesn't pick up on it. Or if it's magic, maybe it's something like Harry Potter where, you know, when when electronics get close to the castle, they fritz and don't work. So maybe, like, Erika's magic does the same thing where, like, when she uses her magic, it, like, fritzes the electronics or something. We'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it is New Trials canon that Aki got chummy with the boulder operators and they they showed him how to to use it, which is so stupid, but whatever. So (laughs) so he could have he could have taken it a step further and like greased the the camera people's palms with money. And yeah, Eh, anyway, he was like, do you want to see some bikini pictures of my sister? (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh my god, yeah, that 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 will get him in any, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Sharon is the real MVP carrying Sakura across the finish line. And I'm glad they got four points. So from the one point of the sandcastles and the four points of the obstacle race, they've got five points. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I love that Chiharu and Takashi did well, too. I yeah. thought that was really cute. Yeah, because Erika and uh, Aki, they were gloating. It's like, oh, look at us. We got so many points. And then Takashi's like, uh, Chiharu and I got the same amount of points. And they mm-hmm. didn't cheat. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. So now we're at the part with the talent show. And I'm so glad that SNS performed the Untitled Violin song that was written by their parents. And they have so many skills. I'm glad that they went with this one. <laughs> yes. And, it, you know, it's always nice to hear that song again, you know, because I feel like we haven't heard it in a while. <laughs> I know. I was so happy when it made its way. But right before they're going to perform, Sakura sends the presence of the Dark Force. Now, in the chapter, she says it's been a while since one of those came up. So I looked at my notes, and I noticed that the last Dark Force was the Whip from chapter 29. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's true, huh? Yeah, so that, that amounts to about two months in their timeline. Wow, because yeah, because we've had like the Phantom and stuff during Tokyo, but Nothing he captured. was mostly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Whoa. I mean, wow. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. It just like shows how like, like, yes, it's true. Like the Phantom did wreck some havoc, but like, I'm just going about by like Dark Force caught, Dark Forces caught. And uh, the last time Sakura stealed one was literally chapter 29. <laughs> Man, wish Chan's attention to detail there. Like, Good on you, girl. <laughs> so um, she finally comes head to head with the wolf, and it went after a child, and, and Sakura managed to injure it before it ran away. Now, this is when I wrote that I'm surprised Sharon didn't sense any of this, but like, we're gonna get there, but he does call her out, and it's like, yeah, don't go alone. I was like, why didn't he follow her? Maybe he thought she. she he wanted to make her think that she had this under control so she could let he could lecture her afterwards i don't know i just i just thought it was kind of unch on like to just like let her go off like that or maybe by the time he sensed it she was like it was already running away well i think it's because and spoiler for the next chapter you know his powers are getting suppressed so I think since he's like, and I think this is about, cause you know, the full, cause the full moon was this chapter, right? The beginnings of it and stuff. And so I think it's like his powers are draining from him, from him and he doesn't know why. So I think that's why he got so tired easily on the obstacle course. I feel like that was the first time we've ever seen him like collapse in exhaustion Yeah. and with, with him not being able to sense the dark force. So I think this is all foreshadowing on Wish Chan's part for next chapter. Interesting. I didn't think of it that way. That's really cool. So I was already very charmed by Takashi and Jeru's skit. <laughs> and I even drew a fan art of it on MS Paint. But when I heard your interpretation, <laughs> I was beyond delighted. <laughs> you have such a pretty singing voice. And that's why we're so lucky to have you as our audiobook reader. <laughs> I cannot tell you because you know obviously I kind of forgot and when I read that I was like I how could I not for how can I forget this scene when it's literally Disney? Disney like I am the biggest Disney adult fangirl and I had so much freaking fun like I had to like record it a couple times because I just kept giggling and giddy like, <laughs> I love that Timon and Pumbas. <laughs> It's such a classic. I know. It's like, <laughs> it's already one of my top, well, you know, let, let's face it, all, a lot of Takashi Jiharu moments are my top moments, but this is definitely, like, probably really one of my tops, and, and you just brought it to a whole new level. Oh, thank you. And one of the questions I want to ask Wish Chan when we get to our Q&A is, I almost guarantee this is a skit her and her friends must have done, because that's just such an obscure, you know, because it's the beginning of, yeah. You know, and so like I don't know. I just feel like her and her friends must have done this at a talent show, and that's so. That's one of the questions I'm going to ask her. <laughs> hmm. 
going to challenge you on that. Mm. I'm going to say that Wish Chan is too shy and that she wouldn't have performed it. And she's just such a good wordsmith that, that she, she just like made that up for the chapter for that specific couple. All right. You're on. We see each other in person next time. The other buys the other dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I couldn't see Sakura's dance, but I could picture it beautifully when you read the description. And I was very, very happy that, well, yeah, we talked about it. The violin piece made the chapter. Of course it did. And um, can you send me the link of that so I can post it to our Facebook group? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, sure can. Yeah. Arima wanted, so Arima awarded SNS top prize um, of five points, and it was well-deserved. And I think it's important to note that for the talent competition portion, only one couple could get the five points. Everybody else either got four, three, two, one. But there was only one couple who can get the five points, and S and S, they got it. So, and, and that means they get to move on to the next day. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely had to get that five mm-hmm. points, right? Because yeah. like, they were, since they did so low in the sand building contest. Yeah, so the stakes were high. <laughs> mm-hmm. But how can you compete with something like that? Yeah, it's, so pretty. Like, maybe if they weren't in the running... Um, it's hard. It's, I guess it's a toss up. The Takashi and Chiharu skit was really funny, but I'm sure that Aki and Erica's song must have been really beautiful. But I wonder what they sang though, because it's like, oh, they are the leads. They're like they have main roles of the of the musical. But, but um, Erica, she's um, Romeo's Rosalind. Rosalind and Aki. I can't even remember. Tybalt. And and what's the relationship between the connection or between is- the two? Or is Aki the Prince of Cats? I know that Takashi is the one who dies. Yes. So so he's Mercutio. Yeah, Takashi's Mercutio. So he's either Tibble or the Prince of Cats. Anyway, but yeah. yeah. That's a, that is a good point. Because, you know, what would Rosalind sing? Like, oh, my dress is beautiful. I'm so pretty. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> By the end of the day, ten couples move forward. I loved how the MC encouraged the cut couples to try out next year. Because I'm already surprised that the 20 couples stayed intact from <laughs> registration to the day of the show. But that just makes me wonder if this suggests that these are just partnerships rather than couples, as we see with Aki and Erica and even Sakura and Sharon. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. It's like, if you guys are still together, <laughs> try again <laughs> next year. <laughs> the teen romances, they're so fickle. That's so true. That's so true. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Back at the estate, Sakura finds Wolfie Chen with a cut on his paw, as if it was sliced by a sword. And those are the little words, might I add. Sliced by a sword. Now, I have to admit, I think I was just too invested in here, in the here and now, back when I read this chapter in 2003, because I clearly remember not making the connection between Wolfie Chan and the werewolf, and feeling especially foolish when Wish Chan said that a lot of people caught on with her foreshadowing. Oh, Priya. <laughs> like, what? Wolfie Chan is the werewolf? I didn't see that. It's your naivety of never owning a dog. So you were just flabbergasted about the dog part. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I, I remember being so embarrassed. I'm like, it's right there in front of me. And I didn't make the connection because I just want to, I just want to devour the chapter. <laughs> it is true. When you read something really quick, you know, too, you don't retain as much. So yeah, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> um. Arima was reminiscing about her time on the best couple con- couples contest, and after what she explained, I don't even know who had it worse. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> now, I want to touch upon this quote. So, was her father, Kinomoto Fujitaka, the one her mother had been destined to be with, or had he o- been only a second choice after Ryuren? Now, do you have thoughts on this? Like, regardless of meeting Ryuren first, she had to be destined to be with Fujitaka, or else Sakura would never have been born. Um, 
I'm a, so I'm in the camp of a person can have multiple soulmates for multiple different reasons. Like, I feel like you can have a soulmate that's like the one you're destined to be with, the one you're destined to love and have children with. But then I also feel like there can be a soulmate you have in the beginning that helps you grow as a human. And, you know, I feel like there can be different soulmates for different times of your life. And like, not to get sappy, but I feel like you're a soulmate to me because, you know, I feel like we're so similar and I feel like it was kismet. We were kind of brought together together. And even when we we're in person, like we were both kind of scared when we first met in person. We're like, is this going to translate as well in person? I don't know. But like right away, we like clicked like we've been friends forever. Oh, my God, I'm getting emotional. <laughs> it's crazy. But I don't know. Like, I feel like you're my friend soulmate. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's two words of affirmation. <laughs> Just crying as we're like, I love you so much. I love you, too. Anyway, but so, so I don't know. I've kind of been that camp of, I think you can have multiple different soulmates. Mm-hmm. How about you? <laughs> you know what? Amen to everything you said. You, you, <laughs> you said it so beautifully. And you no, know, no, for sure. Like I was with my ex for, for a good 11 years and he was the person that I needed to be with for that time until it wasn't time anymore. And I took some time to myself and I'm with somebody new and uh, we're really excited for our life together. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, for sure. It doesn't just have to be one. There's definitely multiple people who you could, who you could meet and have special impacts on you as we go through life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Aaron called Sakura on being jumpy around him. But after that little run in the theater where he like, quote unquote, was smelling her perfume. I'm sorry, but that alone would make me skittish like yeah you cornered the girl in a dark theater and try to like hit on her like that's gonna make any woman like uneasy around you (laughs) we get a confession of sakura admitting that she likes sharon unfortunately it's shared with aaron and not with sharon but it's nice to know where sakura's true feelings stand right (laughs) It's nice to hear it said aloud anyways. And so, and I also feel like, I don't know, I could be reading a little bit too much into this, but I feel like Sakura, like even though Sakura comes off as naive, I feel like she does kind of pick up a little bit on the fact that Aaron maybe likes her a little bit. So I feel like this was kind of her way of shutting him down sort of too. Like, look, I like someone else, you know? And like, this is like her Sakura way of doing it, you know, instead of just coming out and just being like, you're creepy, please stop hitting on me. <laughs> I see that. I see that. Now, I wasn't thrilled with the Sakura and Sharon, uh, no, sorry, with the Erica and Sharon scene until we saw Aaron called Erica out for cheating, and, and that I loved. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, it kind of mirrors, you know, Sakura's conversation with Aaron, too. So it's a nice little parallel mirror scene there. Okay, back in Sakura's room, Kiro-chan makes a comment that Wolfie-chan looks like her embroidery. And uh, and then we get a cute scene of Sharon giving Sakura aloe and, getting, and warning her not to go off fighting dark forces on her own. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the audiobook, this is pretty much the one hour mark. So this is where we're going to stop this episode for now. And then the next episode, we're going to talk about purely the uh, the scavenger hunt. And uh, that concludes the first half of part third of chapter 35. It must rain first. <laughs> okay, moving on to Dark Force's corner. The wolf makes an appearance in its true form. Sakura uses Windy to attack the wolf and next uses Sword. And the erase was even used to wipe out the attack child's memory. So a lot of OGs. All right. So. We keep <laughs> getting corrected, don't we? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember her using the OG cards. And then all of a sudden, they're sneaking in left and right. <laughs> uh, now, I've highlighted two uh, fan arts. As I mentioned before, there's... One that I drew with Microsoft Paint back in 2013, Takashi and Chihiro's skit. And uh, I had so much fun drawing this <laughs> and like copy pasting. So like Chihiro's arms, it's like 
I just drew one arm and I flipped it. Even Takashi's arm, I, I kind of like raised it and, and just sort of changed his hand a little bit. But uh, no, I had a great time and even the ribbons, like I, I thought, I think this was like one of my favorite fan arts. So cute. But yeah, you got their body proportions good and the sweet caress of twilight. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I even made the moon, moon like a prop, like hanging out. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, that's so cute. Very, very cute. And the next one is uh, Best Couples, Couples Contest by Wish Love. And it's a, it's a black and white drawing by Wish Chen. And it's Sakura and Sharon in their outfits before they go play the violin. So pretty. I love her detail. Me? Oh my god. Well, it's funny. I can tell she's in her Fushigi Yugi uh, era because uh, Sakura's hair is very reminiscent of Miyaka. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, that's such a pretty dress. It's so pretty. So we're going to um, skip the author's note. We'll wait until the end of the next episode for Melanie to read that out loud. And uh, that concludes this episode. You have been listening to New Trials, the podcast, where it must rain for there to be a rainbow. <laughs> You've been listening to New Trials, the podcast. Please be sure to check out the audiobook version of this fan fiction that you can find anywhere that you can find this podcast. Also, please be sure to check out the Facebook fan page for New Trials, where a big part of the discussions happen nowadays. And be sure to stick around next week where we continue our discussion of chapter 35, It Must Rain First. <laughs>